Hi folks, this is Patrick with uh, Northwest Treasures and this is our geo talk for today. Uh, we've been doing some work around our home here at the spring and uh, so I thought I'd kind of give you a little tour of some of the rocks that we collect and we put in buckets and then I tend to forget about them. And the other day my wife reminded me just how many I have out here. So I thought it'd be kind of neat for you to see just what I have out here. So I thought I'd just kind of start with this end and uh, I had forgotten I had most of these things, but here is a bucket of what we refer to as prairie agate, but these are really misnamed. They're really not prairie agate at all. Agate is really a term reserved for translucent stones like uh, over, over here, Montana moss agates. These are more translucent stones. Very pretty when they're broken up. By the way, if you're looking for tumbling material, I have a bunch of it here, $10 a pound. And in fact, these so-called prairie agates are also very pretty tumbled up. And they're also $10 a pound. But um, I have a lot of stuff here. These are beautiful Montana moss agates. And uh, so those are really agates. But here are these things called uh, prairie agates. I think, anyway, it's my opinion that these are stromatolites. And uh, these are connected with uh, activity from cyanobacteria. And they tend to make these kinds of, uh, of uh, pictures in the rocks. These are very similar to what is in the travertine at Yellowstone. And uh, these are very pretty, though, tumbled up. It's a very hard stone. And uh, boy, I've got a lot of nice ones here. Forgot I had these. Anyway, these are stromatolites. And uh, look at underneath this bucket here. And well, here we go, more Montana moss agates. And she didn't throw any of them away. That was kind of you, sweetie. But these are, uh, these are all very pretty when they're tumbled up. Anyway, this is where I keep a bunch of them. Um, underneath, well, what's this over here? Oh, I've been looking for this stuff. I need this. This is uh, shale from Montana. And uh, it's very pretty shale, but uh, I can I can use it. Man, there's a big bucket of it here. Well, I just forgot I had it. Anyway, lots and lots of shale. Uh, but uh, going down the row here, what else do we have? Well, lots of petrified wood. Look at this stuff here. Now there's one with a bug on it. Not a trilobite, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty piece of petrified wood. Lots of it in here. And uh, some really pretty green marble. Look at this stuff here. This is nice. Green marble. Oh, look at all this petrified wood. Wow, that's a pretty piece. Look at that. This stuff here I picked up in Oregon one year. Very, very nice stuff. Also very pretty tumbled. And back here, ooh, this is uh, vesicular basalt. Vesicular basalt is actually very uh, basalt with, uh, that had been very gaseous. And that's what those holes are. Technically, they're vesicles. And then uh, I remember when I was doing a lot of cutting, I cut a bunch of Thunder eggs never got around to polishing them, so they're right here. Well, wow, lots and lots of them in here. Now we're doing this one. It's a little on the chillier side because this place will get snakes. And it gets a little warmer, warmer, and uh, I don't like snakes. Over here, I don't know I could use these. This. Stuff is going to have to be clean, but it's it's all it's called uh, amygdaloidal basalt, where you have uh, zeolite minerals that form in the vesicles. I'll have to go through that one of these days too. Vicky has done very well not to throw any of this out. You know, she could have done this when I wasn't looking, but she didn't do it. 
Maybe she forgot to. <laughs> There's some more real pretty. This is real pretty petrified wood too. It's amazing. You find this stuff and probably think you're going to use it one day. Um, and uh, you just, you, you never do. You just kind of keep it back and then comes a day you, you do need it. Oh, I'm glad that stuff is here. Wow. Oh, look at this. this uh, now, this is petrified wood that is from uh, Washington here around the Sammamish area. There's a lot of that here. Some of it's very, very nice. They're pretty piece. Oh. And, uh, oh, okay. Now, here is a material called breccia. It's a limestone breccia. Angular pieces of rock that are in a limestone matrix. And that came from Montana. I can remember picking that up. Vicki helped me do that. And uh, well, there's, I could use that too. That's andesite lava with some big feldspar crystals in it. Wow, what an adventure. Oh, look here. Look, you're going to use this. This is uh, porphyry. Porphyry means that there are visible uh, crystals in uh, some kind of a matrix. And that's what this is. Those white marks you see is sodium feldspar. Well, I do have a big supply of, oh, there's more of, there's more of the basalt board. There's a nice piece here. The feldspar crystals tend to be rectangular in shape. And, wow, look at this petrified wood. There is a nice piece. That's a real pretty piece there. Well, it's not getting any more valuable. Oh, I don't know why this is doing here. There's a big Montana moss agate that needs to be broken up. And part of a pretty quartz geode there. Yeah, here's some more of that. Amygdaloidal basalt there. You can see the crystals in the vesicles. And last but not least, this is uh, some more, I believe this is marble, a type of marble. It's really kind of a pretty, pretty stuff. But that will also come in handy. A lot of this stuff will show up in your kits over the next year. There's a nice piece of quartzite. You can always tell quartzite has a real sugary appearance. some more marble there. Marble doesn't have to be white. It can be all kinds of colors, but definitely it is a, a rock that's been changed in some way. Well, here's to another 25 years of collecting. <laughs> and uh, see, you can have fun too. Just let your kids take those five gallon buckets out when you go out driving and fill them up and, and bring them home and storm right outside your house. <laughs> have fun this summer. <laughs>